Hi guys, uh, my name's Harry. I'm, uh, I'm an IT infrastructure recruiter. I work for Ignite. Some, some of you might have heard of us. We used to be called Clarius Candle. Um, so I just wanted to, to, to talk to you fairly shortly about, um, about CVs. Um, I, know, I know a lot of you probably don't use CVs anymore. <laughs> probably just jump from, from one opportunity to another. Um, but, but, but sometimes, um, you know, sometimes it becomes a bit of a necessity to kind of, to kind of dig it back out um, and, and dust it off and, and reshape it and send it to a few people. Um, so, so really, just just wanted to kind of just take you briefly through it. Um, a lot of it's very basic, but but some there might be a few ideas in there that you haven't thought about. I think, hang on, I haven't, I haven't thought about that. That's quite a good idea. So, so it's really just a, a kind of a, a fly through. Um, just to cover a few few points off. All right. I had to put that in there. Oh, can you hear? Oh, I'll use the microphone. Oh, it's gone, is it? Oh, that's right. Can you hear me at the back? Just? How about now? Is that better? Yeah. Um, any any it crowd fans out there? I just I just had to put that in there. Um, <laughs> Um, I guess it just kind of uh, goes with, uh, you know, why do we have CVs? Uh, yes, occasionally we uh, we get a bit tired of, of where we where we where we're working, stagnating a bit. So, uh, so certainly a lot of the people I talk to in the in uh, sort of on the sort of junior end of support, very much you know, have we tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> and um, so I thought I'd put that in there. Very funny, but. Um, yeah, just going to go very quickly through, uh, talk about what a CV is, talk about some of the key ingredients, um, first bit, middle bit, and the end, and then close. All right. So what is a CV? Any takers? Just a, sort of a definition, ideas about what a CV is to people? Yeah. It's a list of jobs you can't get back to. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Love it. Any other suggestions? Yeah, personal sales tool. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Any other takers? Great. Yeah. So I've just put a few, few ideas down. It's a record of your career to date. Fairly simple. Uh, demonstration of your skills and experience. Your brand ambassador. Uh, it's a passport. It's a passport to the opportunity. A um, few keywords I thought so it might you can associate with the CV. It shows integrity. Shows continuity of, um, of work, whether you, you've got your own company, um, self-employed, or go from job to job, contract to contract. And speciality, it starts, it certainly as DevOps engineers, we start to specialize in, in certain areas, so you can hone in on that. Right. The key ingredients, so really, I think to, um, these days, just, uh, just sometimes refresh the, the idea about how, how you sell yourself, yourself on paper. Um, if it's even if it's a CV or if you're, you're tendering for some work, um, really everything you know, going back to the kind of you know those sort of high school university days of having a beginning, a middle, and an end, try and keep some of these documents quite you know simple without trying to overcomplicate them too much. Um, it's got to have your personal brand and style as well to a certain extent. Um, a clean and easy read, um, a clean and easy to read uh, font and format. So say keep it simple, stupid. People have heard of KISS before. Yeah. Um, just the basics of your name and contact details. Personal statement or objective is, is good. Um, just briefly cover your education and go into key, key skills, not just your technical, but some of your soft skills as well. A career summary, I'll talk a little bit more about that as well, because I find that can be quite a key, a key tool within the document. And then your career in detail, that makes up the, you know, the majority of your CV. Um, awards recognition can sometimes add value as well, and then some personal interests. Again, um, something to, to definitely mention, be proud of, but not try not to overstate them too much. All right, something uh, you know, think impact, think about first impressions, and I think audience. I think who 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 am I actually trying to sell myself to? Um, is it are they going to be a predominantly very technical audience? Uh, are they going to be technical leads out there who really just want to see, right, can this person do this job? Have they got Puppet? Have they got Ansible? Have they used Jenkins? Have they, you know, can, they're going through and ticking the box and 
And in what context have they used it? Am I going to include brief working examples of, okay, at A and Z, I did this, this, and this, and or at, you know, at Telstra, I integrated this with this? Try and think about your audience. Or is it going to be a slightly higher level role where you're, you're appealing to, uh, to management, you know, to, to sort of little senior management, where you're going to be talking about, right, key achievements in this role, we, meant we improved. We improved the process or we reduced the, the time to uh, the lag time by X amount, we saved the company X many thousands of dollars. Um, so, so also try and think about you know whether your your audience is going to be more sort of on the technical side or, or maybe a bit of a blend of, of sort of management. You know, the, the technical lead might pass the CV up to the manager and go, oh, you know, look at this person, I think they're really good. And oh yeah, you're right. You know, they've got some. You know, they, they've. Uh, Managed to sort of navigate that particular environment that could be a really good fit. Sorry, yeah. is that better? That could be a really good fit in this, uh, you know, in this environment where I'm using these tools, but then I've got this particular stakeholder who's very difficult. Um, that's um, that's uh, I find at the moment that's quite a contemporary look to the CV. They the changes changes from 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 year on year, um, centralising your kind of your details at the top in the middle. Um, not everybody has it like this. Some people have congested it more. Some people have, um, have everything in tables. Um, and they'll put a personal statement, so nice and simple. Um, try and almost modulate it so you've got it into, into it, you, can, you can actually move the sections around. And then this is one of my favorite aspects of the CV, uh, career summary. Anybody got one of these on, this, on the top of the CV? Yeah? One or two? Yeah. What it does is, and if you're going to use it, have it on the first page, the front page, because it really delivers a lot of impact. Especially if you, if you keep it very simplistic. You've just got three columns. On the left, I've got my employers. Right, so that, that's the branding. I've got uh, you know pe pe people are uh, companies that I'm proud of working for and, and to carry a bit of weight in the market. In the middle, I've got what I was doing, um, and on the right, I've got dates. And the beauty is, you can always change. You can change these around. You can switch the columns around depending on, you know, what what industry you're in. Obviously, in IT, it, it just it depends. You might find well, look, because uh, I'm a DevOps engineer, I can just carry that role title these days. Carries a lot of weight in the market. So you know what? I'm going to put that over here um, because branding is not so important. I'm doing, I'm working for my own startup at the moment. Um, that's that's over here, so it's not as important. Um, that's more important to me now. Or, well, to be honest, I've been doing this for a long time, and I think that carries a lot of weight at the moment, so I'm going to put dates first. We can switch this around. But the important thing is it can, it can, add, it can add a bit of punch to the first page. So people, uh, you know, your managers or prospective employers are going to look at that and go, oh, brilliant. It's all congested. It's a digest. It's on the front page, uh, and it can add a bit, of a bit of a punch. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So it's quite a simple... It's a simple uh, Simple, simple tool, but uh, it can actually work really well, and not a lot of people, uh, people have thought, think about that sort of stuff. All right, and then the middle bit. You know, again, keep it nice and fresh, keep it nice and clean. Um, in this example, you know, I've got the, the brand there, so I've put the employer up, and I've got the role, and then I've got the date on the right hand side. Um, I do see a lot, a lot of CVs where it's it's, it's quite con congested and quite jumbled up, and and um, you want to try and put, in, you know, have the uh, have the, the information where you think it'll give deliver the most impact. And then I've introduced the company, so there you go, Industry Australia, Medfair, blah, blah blah blah. And then I was brought in to do this, doing this. Just a very brief introduction to kind of set the scene, um, and then straight into right details. I've certainly put one there, but uh, you know, probably try and keep it to. Five, six plus. Go into key responsibilities or key, key achievements. Talk about what you're actually doing in the job, um, and then and then and the bottom section is really the key achievements would really be to, to differentiate what you do, uh, sort of in the daily grind. So yes, I was responsible for this. Yes, I was accountable for doing this and this. But actually, on top of that, I achieved this particular. You know, we delivered this particular project, or I was part of this particular initiative to do this and it's just an extra it's just I suppose try and think of punchy um, punchy achievements that might have been slightly outside the scope of work that you were initially employed to do and that can try it can actually kind of differentiate um, you from from you know peers in the market 
So again, very you know, try and keep it very simple. You can keep it simple so you can modulate it as well, rather than having too much information. Um, then again, I, I do get a lot of people coming to me and going, well, you know, how many pages is too many? It's, it's such a frequent question. Um, where I'm where I'm from in the UK, I think the culture very much is have to have have to have it on two pages. Have to have it on two pages, and I hear it again and again. It drives me nuts. Um, it's it's really about relevant information, pertinent information. Um, it won't matter too much if you've got an eight-page CV, as long as it's all relevant and it's it looks nice uh, and it's well presented on the paper and it's and it's, uh, it's you know it's easily digestible by the audience and somebody's reading it. I, I, you know, I, I, I think it's uh, that that's a lot more important than worrying about squeezing everything onto two pages. Uh, but I get that's a, probably one of the most frequent questions I get asked. Um, how much is too much? All right, and then and then towards the ed education, I'd put especially if if you're very settled in your career now, and you, uh, it's very much something to probably put towards the end. If you're a graduate, I'd you know be the other way around. I'd I'd say look, probably make it very much a forefront if you haven't had a lot of experience. But but for for those for those of us who are a bit more settled and established in our careers, something you could just just as a sort of a hygiene factor to mention toward the end. Um, things like awards and rec recognition, personal interests, really, uh, toward the end of the CV. All right. Does anybody uh, know what that is? It's a heat map of yeah. where somebody books. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. So this was on LinkedIn probably a couple of years ago, but I, I quite like to use an example because it's quite interesting. This is a, a study I think they did for a, um, a, in terms of how a, a recruiter's eye rolls across your CV. Um, it's very interesting. So I think down here, they've, they've, they've actually spent quite a lot of time looking at the education. Which is interesting, but you see a lot of it in, in, on the front there, looking at uh, where, where, where the person's been working last, what their kind of key skills are. Uh, just quickly. Yep. Is that the same resume, just in two different formats, or is that two different resumes? That's good question, actually. <laughs> I think that's two different <laughs> yeah, different formats. Yeah. Um, so they just they just pulled some some I suppose some quick stats from that. Um, so the short time that the, the recruiters spend and look, I think it's something about uh, something around an average maybe thirty seconds. Um, it, it, it's true, you know, we, if you have a some some roles that we advertise or we. Um, have CVs coming in for, but we, you know, we're under the pump. We're, we're busy, so we, we um, and we, we look at enough CVs to, 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 you know, once we've had a, a, a very quick look at it, we'll know if that that person is, is going to be right for that particular role. Um, so really, th things like um, name, current title, company, current positions, start and end dates, uh, and the pre and same for maybe the previous position before that, um, and education. At, Last really just kind of core info that uh, that a, so there's a either hiring manager and a, a recruiter would, would would take note of um, because you know obviously obviously as a as a as a manager you've probably got X amount of time to review them as well or as even an internal recruiter in, internal recruiters can have up to about sixty jobs on at any one time out of I mean, I'm an agency recruiter so I've, obviously I'm more external uh, so my workload's less than that but but. Uh, I suppose in, internal recruiters sitting within large companies can have a lot of a lot of work on, uh, and so they're very much um, you know the, 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 uh, they don't have a lot of time to, to reflect on, on skills and experience. They really just have to to, to, to go for sort of the, you know first in best dressed. Um, so it's good to be it's good to bear in mind. Um, where the, whereas agency recruiters might have a third of that um, because it's more about um, I suppose pitching to potential clients. It's worth it's worth kind of uh, uh, get bearing that in mind when you when you are looking for work. And uh, that's it. So uh, just uh, just wanted to thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, if there's any questions, um, welcome. Yes, sir. So when you put on your resume, you don't currently have a job. Good question. Um, and I'll actually go back to the. 
career section of the that summary I showed you for that. Because um, a lot of people, you know, you may have you may be in a situation where uh, you know all sorts of things can happen. That um, decide to um, get made redundant, decide to travel, and then suddenly, for some reason, the market the market drops. We're out of work for, for six, eight, twelve months. Um, but I'd encourage people just um, to, to actually to, to make sure they include those gaps. Because if you've got a gap of, say, say sort of six to 12 months and got nothing in it, um, the chances are you would have been either doing some travel, uh, you, would have, you, you may have been looking after a relative, you may have been, um, uh, may have been sort of re-educating yourself. But people don't tend to think of, to, to do that to actually fill those gaps. But at the end of the day, what, what, we, what we don't know, what, what they don't know, they don't know. Um, and and it, you'd be surprised to, to, to you know, if, if you manage to, if you can fill a gap and to be honest and say, okay, well, this, in this year, this particular year, I, um, I was doing this, this, and this, and you just, throw, you just treat it like a job. Um, so you can have a gap between, say, IBM and, and, and just Australia and say, oh, I took 18 months to travel and um, I took, you know, took, um, took my VMware certification or something like that. Um, you'd be amazed at how, how, how that can turn people off if they see a big gap there. Um, so, so especially recruiters or, or businesses, they'll turn around and go, well, what, what was that person doing? So I'd encourage people to, to whatever they're doing, even if it was work not related to their, their core career, put it in because you know you can talk to talk to one of us recruiters and say, well, what? How do you think I should turn this? And there might have been uh, elements of, of uh, uh, you know uh, sort of technical initiatives or projects that, that you're actually involved in, if, even if you were, weren't doing you know you know what what you were doing before. And uh, so it's always worth um, kind of seeking advice and saying, well. What should I put in here, and how how do I um, how do I pitch that in, in the document? Um, so so yeah, it's a really good point. I get asked that all the time in terms of uh, you know what should I put there for, for, for just off, you know taking time off at the moment. So. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, good question. Um, It's, yeah, it's, it's totally up to you. Everybody's different. Um, some people like to put everything on there. <laughs> um, some people like to go, say, five, ten years back. Um, it's just, I think it's very contingent on, on your personal situation. Uh, some people just put, yeah, previous, uh, previous employment details available on, on request, which is a good one to do. I try and put, um, I try and put at least the, the last sort of, you know, seven to ten years on there, on average, um, but it's a good question. Everybody's different. Everybody's in different situations, uh, and, and it's, it's, um, it's yeah, it's just a question of, of, of yeah, how um, it, your you know your personal preference. Right. Sorry, if, if the uh, devil's issue is changing so quickly, why do you think that ten years ago? On what industry, you know, what area you're in, and it can, can droop a bit. And, and sometimes, um, sometimes you need those, uh, the, you know, the, the roles at the back just to kind of to, sh to show some sort of demonstration of, of, of you know where you use those uh, uh, those skill sets, even even if they've um, sort of dropped out of the fad a bit. Um, but it's a really good point. Um, yeah, if, it, if, if it's trial and error, if, if, if you're finding that. Uh, you know, you're speaking to different recruiters and different uh, peers and, and different managers, um, and, and they're not really sort of that interested in, uh, you know, in a role you had 15 years ago. Then, um, yeah, absolutely. I, see. Um, I noticed that you didn't have any section there for references. Does that mean that people just don't ask for them anymore? They contact you directly now. Um, what's your yeah, I, I usually just advise people to just put references available or on, on request at the bottom. Um, 
but yeah, everybody's different. If, if you've got contacts that you're happy with, then that, you know they're happy to have their name at the bottom. You can always you can always put just put the names down or their sort of part their initials, maybe uh, uh, you know first initial last name or something like that, and the, the role title um, and the company without putting the the numbers on. If you think that'll kind of add a bit of punch to your CV, um, especially if, if it's quite a Sort of a niche industry like like DevOps, a lot of people may know a lot of people. And you go, oh, he worked for that person. Oh, I know that. Person. I think I know that person. People don't know who that means. Um, so so yeah, good, good point. Uh, I guess, but it's it's just up to you really. It, it's um, I, I think most of the time you don't really need to put them on there. Um, you have to, I suppose you have to, and, and, and you don't know where your CV is going as well. It could could end up. Um, Somewhere you don't want it to be, and then those people can be called up if you leave the details on. So, so yeah. Generally speaking, if, if people want to, you know, if they want to pursue further, it's, it's it's not an issue. They can just ask you for the references. Uh, you said to consider your audience as far as how how many people you your resume is, but if the audience is a recruiter, how many people should it be? <laughs> Um, the, the, I think uh, I think there's a, there should you know there, there, there's I like to think there's a few good recruiters out there who who, um, who who know roughly what you know what their kind of verticals do who know roughly you know they know roughly what a DevOps engineer does what tools they use how they um, uh, roughly how, how that works they're, obviously they're not experts but um, I, I, I think you just need to have your CV prepared for for a, a, an audience that is is kind of both technical and business savvy. If that makes sense, and it's a bit of a skill. Um, but you need to still have you need to still have that technical detail in there. You need to be able to kind of demonstrate uh, even even just briefly you know, throughout the CV how you how you've used certain tools, what's how you've come about, um, how how you've come to solutions, what what you what you've created. Uh, so, so it's good. It's a really good point, um, but uh, but but I think uh, I think it's just about having a, a CV that's kind of comprehensive and uh, and can appeal to, to both like the technical and non-technical audience. I know a, as an infrastructure um, as an architect uh, uh, who's got three different CVs, it works really well because they, they you know I think he's working at um, Amazon at the moment, but he, you know very confident he knows his skill set. So. He, I think one's got one one enterprise architect CV, one one uh, cloud cloud architect CV, and one infrastructure architect. Because he knows he knows what the, what the market wants. So if you kind of if you if you've um, if, if you know what your skill skill set is worth in the market, you know you know how it's interpreted. You can actually tailor, you know, maybe a, you can actually sort of uh, fabricate a couple of different CVs because you know well there's a demand for this skill set and I can do that, and there's a demand for that as well. Um, so, so that's one option as well. Some people do that. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm curious about how uh, recruiters react to uh, standard responses in LinkedIn. Right, yeah. Uh, how you mean how we use, how we communicate so with LinkedIn? If I get a message on LinkedIn yeah. and there's an option that says no, and that sends you a standard response that uh, probably you're familiar with it. Yeah. How do you, I am, I'm interested in how do you react to it? Am I losing opportunities by just going no and with a standard response? Um, it's just uh, no. I don't think so. It just it just it just tells us that you're not looking. No. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. I I I must admit I'm I'm not a great user of LinkedIn. I just um, I find it just takes too long to get responses, and uh, I find it um, uh, what's the word? I just yeah, I just I just find it a too, bit too long-winded. I, I much prefer to try and um, to, 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 to sort of communicate through uh, other people who they know. Uh, I find that a bit faster. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's a great tool. Um, it's one thing I'd say, say about LinkedIn that it's, uh, you can use you can it can be used really effectively. Um, and if um, if you can manage to get your um, what I do is I've actually got my my mobile number. Just and I probably shouldn't be saying this as a recruiter, but I've got my mobile number actually pasted uh, into my name, 
Um, it's a bit suspect if you kind of if you've been in a role for a while and and and, and nobody will suspect you you're wanting to move because then suddenly if you put your mobile number next to your name and LinkedIn, people will start asking questions. Um, but for me, I can get away with it because because uh, it's my job. Um, but but I find that's quite a, quite a useful one to kind of get your attention because as recruiters, we, we it's difficult for us to uh, to find the contact information if, if we're not connected to people, which is probably how a lot of people want it to be anyway. And you don't want to give your number out to every Dom, Tom, Dick, and Harry. So it's it's it's, it's a good one. Um, it's, it can be a really, uh, really effective tool if you use it uh, for its intended purpose. Any other questions? Sort of on. I think that's it. Uh, please join me in oh, thanking. Sorry, one more. One more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're all good. Okay. Um, so, am I like, say I apply for a job yeah. as a recruiter, yeah. am I likely to uh, get my social media just absolutely ravaged? Are you just getting background information and stuff like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mean if you, as you apply for a job and and suddenly a target, are you? Into, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I, I probably don't, I don't speak for most recruiters, but I, 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 it's not the first thing I do. I don't tend to just jump onto the LinkedIn account. I should do <laughs> to just check, but I, I kind of I trust people what what they put in there. In the CV is 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 is, uh, is what is I suppose uh, what the skills and experience are. But but you're right. It, it, yeah, absolutely. Um, once it, once you kind of uh, uh, I suppose once you put an application for a job, you, you you're absolutely a target for you know from businesses or recruiters, hiring managers, or whoever it is, the audience to, to actually just jump on your LinkedIn. So it's always good to have it kind of up to date and current because it's it's like a, a living breathing CV online. So we, yeah. As long as we've got it there. Brilliant. Cool. Thanks very much, guys. If, um, yeah.